Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are finally on our last day. This is it. We're going to Florence today. Can't wait. It's a uh, long. We're doing. It's a nine and a half hour Michelangelo excursion. And okay. <laughs> hey, I think there are a number of times that it's uh, definitely worth it. You well, know, if things go well, place of the Renaissance. This could be the beginning of a quite long video. So we'll see how that goes. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, so what do you think? What do you got to add to our uh, little morning? Nothing. Here? I'm hoping we have some time to relax after we see all of the sights and the, you know, we, uh, we get to go to the Duomo, we get to see the baptistry, yeah. baptistry doors, we get to do everything. I'm really hoping the that we get Academia, a chance. David is there. David, the statue, the famous statue of David. But yeah, I'm hoping for a chance to go to a nice restaurant. And because, hang out and relax. Because once we come back here, we've been to everyone. We've done all these. You know, this is something, yeah, yeah. we'll see. For the best, I think it'll be fine. Me too. Has a uh, small, smaller group than we've been going with, most likely. Uh, there's an easier version of this, easy Florence, and uh, we're not doing that one. I guess we're doing hard. But we're doing the more challenging <laughs> yeah. walking one. Which yeah, it's the several be a great hours. Idea for me. The other one is several hours shorter. Uh, mm -hmm. This one, it said, expect to do about two miles of walking. Okay. So, but over nine hours, and then you're going to take a couple. It's what? It's an hour drive each way, though. Yeah. So you lose two hours just. Yeah. On the drive. Well, because um, Florence so, is landlocked, yeah. and the actual tour stop is in Livorno. Yeah. Well, We're so, not going to Pisa this time, though. No. We're just going to Florence. It's okay. I, it's it's a tower. It leans. That's it. That's it. Yeah, so we, no, no big deal. You've seen it. All right. We will uh, catch up with you guys. A little later. A little, a little soon. Hey there, and now we have um, taken our tour bus, and the tour bus has dropped us off. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's mainly a walking pedestrian sort of mall-like area when you get to the old town in Florence. Now, I'm here as well, and I've seen they sell these art right on the street, and you've gotten some in the past, have. haven't you? Yeah. They, these are real artists that display their work right on the street where you can see people, yeah, people almost stepping the on them. But when the police come, they pick them all up because they're not oh. supposed to be You know, doing I almost any. stepped on some too. You yeah. have to really pay, look down and pay, it, because it's so crowded and so many people. And, and in about a second, you'll see how beautiful they are. These people are really talented and they're done on canvas. Yes. So they're really nice souvenirs. Um, I think the price for any of those was around 20 euros they're or cheap. 20 to they 25 Expensive. No, but these guys must make a good living because I bought several of them last time I was in Florence and they actually put it in a tube and I was able to bring it home and I think maybe got one in my office frame. Now here we are in the line to go in. To the Academica, which is where the works of but Michelangelo, specifically we were, David, is because located. Because we were the group, they'll transfer us over to a separate line that lets us come in by reservation and we get ahead. Otherwise, the lines are just long. Don't even try to do it during the busy tourist season without booking and reserving or purchasing an excursion or tour that includes a guide to walk you through the academica. Now see all those people. Needy is telling me that this is slow. Oh yeah. Compared to what it's going to be. So the, everywhere you go, throngs of people. Just everywhere. And one, this is a perfect example. And, and one example here is this is pretty much the limit for the throngs because of COVID. They actually started cutting back on how many oh, people could be assigned to each tour guide. Now mind you, our bus had 36 people in it. We broke up into three different groups and we each had our own guide with a headset that we were wearing and therefore he gave us the history and a little bit of information about every major piece of art in the Academica while we were and in there. The group's about 19 was the limit but he mentioned something that it was down to like two or three during COVID. That's right. The group size. So each tour guide can bring in 19 people and they only let you in in so many, I don't know, waves or cycles. But look, it's crowded. And this is not at all what it was the last time I was there. I would say there were double the amount of people. It was elbow to elbow, shoulder yeah. to shoulder, people thronging as if you were at a rock concert. Because this to is get kind of shoulder end. season. This isn't peak. This, this isn't was peak. early. That's right. Peak starts and in June, July for... I, don't, I couldn't take the heat of peak. In, out there. I will say the weather was delightful. Beautiful, beautiful. 70s, almost every day. It was just gorgeous. Yeah, much better than the hundreds. Okay, so here is David from every crack and every angle. And, of yeah, course, famous... Very cheeky, that last spot. Uh, definitely. So there you go. Lots to see here. Absolutely. A little garden at the museum here. I see lemons and limes. I can't spot any figs, but 
a nice little garden. Okay, so upon leaving the Academica, we began, um, continued, I should say, the walking tour. You can see the number 24 tour guide there. Her name was Antonella. She Antonetta. was amazing. Antonetta. That's she right. She was absolutely, like, so no, knowledgeable. No, it was, it was Antonella. Was it? Yes, because hey. I know a girl named Antonella from she, Italy. She's uh, been doing this about 20 years, she said. Her English was amazing. For those wondering, this is called the David and Michelangelo, or Michelangelo and David tour. It was a nine and a half hour excursion. We bought it on NCL. Most of it is walking. And look around we here on this video. Miles. Cars are not allowed in unless they're service vehicles. So this is mainly us walking from the Academica to the main squares and to where all the main buildings, uh, Medici being one of the palaces that we're looking at here. Where I was overwhelmed. And there's an Italy there. Look about, oh, yeah. talk about. Actually, I thought we, there was a few out there. No, we was only saw just... this one. There was one at the airport. Oh, that's why. Yeah. But here we are heading toward the main square with the main Duomo church. And there it is. That's our first shot of it. Yeah. It's amazing if you haven't seen this. And when you see it for the first time, it is awe-inspiring. It is the just the scale of all the detail in the architecture combined is mind blowing. I've never seen anything like this anywhere else. And no. probably never will. No, I think it's one of a kind. It's definitely one that of the dome, I think, was the largest dome of that type. And oh, you can hear Antonella telling us a little about it. But I do recall she said it took fifty years yeah. to build. Well and they had to solve how to make that dome. What they did was they built a dome in the dome. Right. And then put that over it. No we, one knew how to do it. We have a lot of shots of this of this cathedral. It's it's called the Duomo. This is the Duomo Square. And right across is the baptistry. And for those of you who aren't Catholic, this is the baptistry. That's the famous baptistry doors. They call it the Doors of Paradise. It's a copy. The original is in a museum. I think the Uffizi Gallery at this point or maybe somewhere else. But the baptistry is kind of plain. It's where people were baptized and they were not baptized in the main church in those days. Now, you could only go in that church with a prior reservation, too. So we couldn't have seen in the church if we wanted to on our tour. Not on this tour, although there were other tours that you can purchase from NCL that did give you the ability to go into the church. Here is the Piazza della Signoria, Signorina, whatever. It's the main square. You can tell it's the main square because so many famous works of art were once displayed here in Florence. Right now, um, mainly copies. The original David was here for 350 years. You can yeah. see a copy of David here now. You can also on the left see a cop, not a copy, I think that's the original There's Neptune. There's several of those statues yeah, that are placed right. And then under the portico that you'll see there under the arches are many other famous pieces of art. This is where I saw the person. She's coming the up. Art. It's coming. It's, it's coming, and I'll let him tell you because I just kind of uh, walked by I, it. It blew me away. And I thought it was a statue just like these Statues. This, and if you look in the art history books, you can see um, Neptune there on the left. You can see Dionysus, I think, with the head of Medusa. There's all kinds of... Oh, there's the copy of David where the original on one the stood. Yeah. Right. This is a very, very busy, very main square. Actually, it's not too busy at this time. I'm sure this becomes elbow to elbow at the right time. Like. Just a little bit of ambiance sound here for you. <laughs> but there are so many beautiful works about it. These statues are... Detailed, intricate. Look at them. <laughs> it's beautiful. Amazing. And, and for the sheer scale, look at the size of the people next to the size of the sculptures. Yeah. That shows you just the grandeur of the artwork here. Oh, here now, it here goes. Here it is. So I, I came up to this, this little statue. statue and I was like, wow, look at this. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, right up until around here, where I believe there he starts to move, it's actually a person doing art. Performance. Performance art. They, it, she just stood there and barely moved. And if it wasn't for those little movements, you never would have known. I, I really had no idea. Hi, Nidia. Nidia. Hi. So continuing our walk forward from the Piazza di Signoria, I think that's the name of it, don't There's quote me, plaza. we came through another yet yeah, plaza, and yeah. of course, this is the one that if you just follow it, you end up at the railing or the edge of the Arno River. See. And it was beautiful because of the sky. We can look to the left and see bridges, and we can look to the right and see the most famous bridge of all, the Pont Neuf. Oh, 
it's called the gold the gold bridge you I'm can just see glad it there. you're making attempts at this because I would just hack this to death trying to say well, these no, things. If I, I don't even know if that's you know I, like I said I've been here a couple times I probably said it wrong but it's the gold bridge there are it's been I guess centuries known for buying gold and jewelry and everything I did go this time but I have been before I actually I think I made myself buy a piece of gold there the last... What are the boats called? I think gondolas. Go those are regular gondolas. I thought they had they're, a different... They're not the same as the gondolas you see in Venice, the, but they do ride like up and down. Venice has the covered ones and the guy... And the guy. Not all of them are covered. Yeah. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. These are longer. Uh, yeah, that was pretty long. And but you can see us walking here right from this main square, continuing our walk. As you can see, it was a lot of walking. So, but if it you're was nice. Do it, but it was stretched out over hours. Here we are heading toward. This is called the Piazza. No, I don't remember. And they're preparing for a sporting event. That's right, a big sporting event. It's something very specific to Florence. Some type of sport they only play. Yep. And uh, here we go. So, uh, do you know the name? Missouri. Missouri, maybe. It's a leather. It's a leather work, leather shop. They're going to do a demonstration how they make some leather in here. Lots and lots of leather work. And I do a demonstration up here. Okay, so we're in this leather shop, and I thought we were coming in to see a leather presentation, which we did after this. Ends up, they are selling jewelry. They're incredible gold jewelry that I think is, um, is should be patented. It looks like diamonds. Never seen anything so beautiful. But she stopped me from recording and said, because of insurance, I can't record this and show it. It looked and, like a leather shop and, and right? she was selling jewelry. Those leather jackets run anywhere from a little over $100. The suede one I saw was 1500 So quite the range. But yeah, that jewelry she's holding up is, it looks like a diamond necklace and it's gold. Huh. It must be some uh, kind of technique. Absolutely they use. amazing. What they, yeah, their technique. Trying a couple of uh, cappuccinos, cafe mini. So I, I believe this was our last stop for the day. The bus, the tour bus, brought us here to the Overlook of Florence. Famous, and famous Overlook. Real, I mean, you see everything from here absolutely gorgeous i got off the, the bus you stayed on you've you've seen this before i've been there done that it was rainy and i just tried to kind of pan through and there's a there's actually not a ton of people here but i guess it happens at the time it depends when you go and it was it was a bit wet a little rainy the ground was wet that's the thing all through all, they use stones for all the walkways very and when slippery. they're wet they're very slippery so you kind of have to be a little cautious where you're walking. Everything's uneven as well. It was pouring during the second half uh, of our day in Florence. We made it through the walking tour that you saw before without too much rain. But right after we left that piazza where the church and everything is, where you saw us have coffees, it was pouring. It opened up. For a couple of hours. We even, <laughs> we even ate for about an hour and a half in a nice restaurant, and it was pouring the entire Actually, time. Actually, you're going to see us. You may have just saw us with a little bit of uh, a capital. Chinos. That was while well, during the rain. We were getting out of the rain, waiting to get back on the bus to come here, and we were just sitting down on an umbrella. We figured the best way to get out of the rain was to buy some more so cappuccinos and gelato. Yeah, definitely. And here's you can sit forever with a cappuccino in in Italy. David of the day, right? The last copy the of last David copy of the day. Of, he's everywhere. He really is, but beautiful statue and beautiful scenery. Yeah. This is the next morning. <laughs> Oh yeah, on a, before we go, this happened to just be yeah. a ship that was next to us. And uh, again, a um, nice sun coming up in the back. Embarkation and disembarkation were in Civita Vecchia. Or Civita Vecchia, to be in any say other it. setting, this ship would look huge. Yeah, but next no. to our ship, it's tiny. It's like, wow, what and a difference. We got a private car to take us to the airport. Here is our airport, we called it lunch. Lunch, brunch. And my last shot, there's some mountains. Is that the... That's over Switzerland. Swiss, Swiss Alps. That's the Alps we, behind the clouds. We flew Rome to London, London back to Boston. Yeah. And that's the trip.